Well, for me, it means that the world has acknowledged the fact that education is important and that for us in Edo State, we're striving and trying to ensure that we reposition education in our country. Without education, without the human capacity, no nation can progress. So, in Edo State, we have always had a tradition of education. But we found out that even though we have the lowest out of school population in Nigeria, the quality of education which our children were receiving was quite poor. And when we examined why kids do not get jobs, get work after school, why the rate of human trafficking was so high, we found out that at the root of these challenges was a very poor education which the, uh, this generation is receiving. And so for us as a government, we now decided to dedicate ourselves, not to just building classes, but to ensuring that we go to the bottom, the foundations of education. And the fact is that if a teacher is not in class, the child will not learn. If the teacher does not know what to teach the child, there will be no learning. And you've got to think about education strategically to realize that what is most important as in anything in life, is the foundation. So if you do not make the right investment, make the right commitments to the foundations of education, that is basic education, then, you know, um, people will not learn, or children will not learn. Because if you could not, be, you learn to add your songs, to, you know, do your, uh, to, to pronounce your alphabet and your words, then you cannot write and you cannot think logically. So what we have done in Edo in the last uh, one and a half years is to first prioritize, prioritize basic education and technical education. Basic education uh, from the perspective of encouraging teachers, making sure that we now we're able to deploy technology to determine and tell when a teacher is in class. So I can tell from my office today when a teacher is in class. If a teacher is not in class, that means the teacher has not synced uh, and signed in into the database, into the platform, we will know. And once the teacher has signed in, the lesson notes, what the teacher is supposed to teach that child for that day has already been preloaded into the teacher's tablet. And we've trained 11,000 of the teachers to understand how to use the tablets, how to use um, the, the technology which we have provided to teach the children. But not only teach the children, but also to motivate them to, um, we abolished the corporal punishments from our schools and you know the teachers now have, have been taught of all the means, all the methods to motivate and encourage children. So what are, what's, what's the, what are the outcomes? We now find out that the children are learning. You know, a child in, in adult state today, after one term in, of you know, being in an adult best program, is now has now, now learned or has learned more than three terms of work as in the old system. So what it means, what this award means is that the nation should know that we are prioritizing education as a party. That is one of the cardinal points of the ABC administration, education. Every time I've had private audience with the president, he's always emphasized education. And the country should know that what is important today is the mental infrastructure, the intellectual infrastructure, not stomach infrastructure. It is intellectual infrastructure, mental infrastructure that will build stomach infrastructure. So that is the direction we must go. Emphasize education, emphasize development of human capacity. Your Excellency, you have the lowest number of out of school children, and clearly it shows that you're bringing the children to school. For most states, infrastructure is not a problem. The main challenge is actually getting the children to school. How do you get the children to school? First, make schooling fun. Let the teachers, uh, when you train the teachers, they train them on how to encourage children to come to school. 
make sure there's something in it for them. The school feeding program is key. If a child or parents know that the children will eat nutritious meals in school, that's an incentive too. And when the children come, let them have fun. Because what is happening with Edobes today, it's not just driven by the teachers, it's also driven by the, 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 the pupils. The pupils want to get to school early. I've seen parents who've asked us, what is the magic? Our children now wake up earlier than us and agitated, they want to get to school. They don't want to get late, uh, they don't want to be late to school. And when you find out why, it's because the children want, they want their names on the character board. Because there's an incentive, there's something, you know, there, there's, there's an incentive for them to, you know, to, to be mentioned in class, that they are well behaved, that they've come to school on time, and, you know, uh, it just helps build character. So, the way you teach, the, the, the elements that are, you know, in the whole system which we have, in, you know, introduced, just encourages, you know, learning, encourages participation of both uh, teachers and pupils and parents. And then more importantly, the other thing we've introduced with the Nobles is community participation. So every school has a governance arrangement, a school-based management committee, made up of parents, made up of teachers, made up of community leaders, who take an interest in the schools in their community. Because our experience in the past was we build schools, we build, we have what we call the Red Roof Revolution, we equip them, put furniture, and in no time they were all vandalized. Because, you know, the view, view was, oh, it's government. But today, um, the infrastructure of the schools have been protected. In fact, members of the school-based management committee take their time out to provide for those schools in their communities. So that community participation, community involvement is also key in ensuring that you have um, a, a, a system where uh, everybody participates. Finally, Your Excellency, budget funding. We still find that 13.5 million children are out of school and clearly you're doing something different. And if all state governors do similar things, we won't reduce that number. How do you handle budgeting and how should what should the federal government be looking uh, to emulate this? What should the federal government be looking for you and how to go about funding education? And the mistake we make in Nigeria, we think our problem is all about money and you know, we're already spending some money. So for us in Edo, what we try to do is get value from what we currently are spending. We're not paying much more for the, for teachers. We're just making sure that they come to school, that they teach, and they earn what we you know pay them. But also to treat them with respect, and whatever their entitlements are, which you budgeted anyway, pay them. Uh, you know, and pay them on time. Um, if you do that first, then you can now sit back and determine what the real gap is, and then how much more to source to fix the problem. So it's it's not totally money, it's not totally financial. I think it's about planning, it's about commitment, and it's about the fear of God. If God has given us these children, and it's our responsibility to make sure that we train and educate them because we received quality education from this country. Uh, so I think it's a commitment to our, to, 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 to our creator and also to our people as a country. Um, yes, mistakes were made in the past. The systems were broken um, as a result of reasons we all know, uh, military intervention, you know, breakdown in the civil service and what have you. But with the benefit of technology today, all those gaps can now be filled. And the emphasis should not just be on schooling, that the child went to school, no. It should be on learning. What did the child learn when they went to school? So thank you. Well, thank you for joining us. We'll now go back to our regular program.